Hi, everybody. This is Taylor Young with Durham's Partnership for Children. Um, I hope you are all doing well as you're watching this webinar today. Um, today, I'll be going over the updated um, NC Pre-K compliance rubric and guidelines for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, if you are a returning teacher or administrator, you'll likely notice this looks quite different from, from excuse me, last year or the years prior. Um, we really try to be as intentional with this as possible this school year and take into account the feedback that we received as far as um, the content that should be included, um, how to approach it, you know, the, the structure of it. So we try to take into account all that feedback and make it as easy as possible um, and really help support our sites maintain that high quality that we're expecting and support you when, if there's any issues, you know, we'll be able to strengthen, we'll identify what those issues are, strengthen your practice and make sure that um, quality remains high in the classrooms. So I'll go ahead and dive right in. This document that you see on the screen here has been designed for NC Pre-K teachers and administrators to use as a guide when submitting evidence for meeting requirements and tracking compliance throughout the school year. So this will be completed quarterly and it will align with the TS gold uh, checkpoint dates. So you'll com one of these will be completed in the fall, again in winter, and again in spring. That will give us a good um, temperature check throughout the school year of where each classroom is, and if there are any areas in which there needs to be some more support and perhaps additional technical assistance, this will give us a way to identify that early on and be able to provide that support to you all. So you'll see here, there are five different categories, each worth 20 points. Um, in order for this to be completed and to receive all points, um, all the appropriate documentation must be collected, updated, and maintained digitally throughout the school year. Um, so I'll go through all these different categories and kind of explain a little bit more in detail than what you see on the screen here. So first is the Innovator Liability Certification. Um, if you are a new teacher or administrator, what this is is a certification within TS Gold um, that determines, that makes sure that teachers are appropriately assessing their children and making sure that you have a good understanding of the objectives and what is appropriate and how children should be rated. Um, this is quite a, a lengthy process, um, but it, it is important. It does help ensure, like I said, it makes sure that you have an understanding of how to assess your children, which then improves the quality of those quarterly checkpoints. And of course, that's connected to your lesson plans as well as your conversations during family conferences. Um, so this is a big component within TS Gold. Um, this is a requirement for all lead teachers to have. Um, I do know that if you are a returning teacher, many of our returning teachers are up for recertification this year. Um, once you are certified, it is valid for three years. If you are up for recertification, um, I want to be clear regarding the expectations for when that should be completed. Um, the date that you should see on your teacher calendar um, for the Interrater Reliability to Completed should be at the end of April of 2022. If you have a certificate that expires or that you need to recertify before that, so let's say, for example, you see um, when you log into TS Gold and you see that your, um, your certificate expires in November of 2021, that is okay. You will not be penalized for that lapse between November and April as long as you meet that requirement by that deadline that is on your calendar, you will receive full credit. Um, the other expectation is that uh, this is remains from last year as well, that 30% of that Interrater Reliability Certification is attempted by January by um, the winter checkpoint. And that is just to make sure that, like I mentioned before, it is a lengthy process. So making sure that it's not being um, pushed off to the last minute to be completed. We want to make sure that you attempt it in earnest and have a good understanding um, to make sure that, you know, again, we can provide support as needed. The second area here, um, documentation. So teaching staff are required to record and collect observations 
and documentation of children's development and learning. This is nothing new. Um, below that, you'll see um, what is expected as far as documentation. Um, I do want to provide some additional clarity surrounding this as well. Um, each NC Pre-K child should have at least one piece of documentation for every domain. So when I say domain, I mean the areas of development and learning. So this is a big change from last school year. So if you're a returning teacher, um, I hope that you pay particular attention to this part. So previously teaching strategies only allowed us to assess and complete documentation and checkpoints for the six, er six main areas, which were social, emotional, physical, language, cognitive, literacy, and math. However, that expectation has changed and you should now see in teaching strategies that you are able to assess children and not only in those six areas, but they have added um, science and technology, social studies, and the arts. So the expectation is that each NC pre-K child should have at least one piece of documentation for every domain. So that is including social, emotional, physical, language, cognitive, literacy, math, science and technology, social studies, and the arts. The reason for this change is, um, again, this is the first time that we have been given access to assess those um, additional areas. But additionally, um, assessing the children on the objectives in these additional areas in the science and technology, social studies, and the arts, um, this will give you, you know, a more holistic view of that child's knowledge, skills, and abilities. Just because we could not formally assess them on these um, objectives in these areas prior to now doesn't mean that it wasn't happening. I am sure that you know a lot of teachers still did art activities and incorporated technology. So the difference now is that you will be required to assess them during the checkpoints as well as collect documentation. So again, each NC pre-K child should have at least one piece of documentation for every domain. The last thing that I would like to mention as far as the documentation section is that um, all documentation pieces must be um, inputted into the digital portfolio and teaching strategies gold. Um, I know many teachers like to have a paper portfolio, you know, hard copies of the child's work. That is fantastic. Um, I encourage you to do so if that's what you'd like to do. However, it is still a requirement that that information is inputted into the digital portfolio in TS Gold. So you are welcome to do both. Um, you're welcome to only do TS Gold, but that is the requirement that everything should be inputted into TS Gold. The next section is the TS Gold checkpoints. Um, so again, teachers must ensure that they have adequate documentation across all of those developmental areas um, to support completion of those TS Gold checkpoint ratings. Um, you can find your TS Gold checkpoint dates on the teacher calendar that was provided or within TS Gold. Um, you can go under the Assess tab and it should show you your, um, when you're looking at checkpoints, it, show, it should show you your completion dates for fall, winter, and spring. Um, so again, just make sure that as you're completing this, that they are finalized. Um, I'm sure if you are a returning teacher, you have heard me say this till I'm blue in the face and I'm sure you're sick of hearing me say it. Um, but you'll see in TS Gold, you can you know do a checkpoint and it can be completed and not finalized. It is the teacher's responsibility to ensure those are finalized. Um, the reason for that is because it, um, you know, it does exactly what it says. It does, it finalizes and solidifies that data and then will impact the reports that are pulled. And as has probably been previously mentioned, DCDEE took over the contract for teaching strategies and they have made it very clear that they are looking at this data in teaching strategies. So we wanna make sure that we are completing everything correctly and as completely as possible. So please make sure your TS Gold checkpoints are not just completed, they are finalized. And you'll be able to visually see the difference in TS Gold 
um, once they finish making their updates in the system. The fourth section is regarding data verification. So this applies just to um, NC Pre-K site administrators. Um, so if you are a teacher, you do not have to do anything for this other than for those quarterly checkpoints, notify your administrator they have been completed. Notify when you've completed your, your documentation and your quarterly checkpoint. Please make sure you communicate that with your administrator because administrators are responsible for this section here. So. Um, directors are responsible for reviewing um, assessment data on an ongoing basis to make sure that it is high quality and that the quantity requirement has been met as well. Um, so you directors, you will receive a quarterly checkpoint verification form. Um, hopefully, if you're a returning director, this does not sound unfamiliar to you. If you are a newer site administrator, um, it's a simple form that will be sent out to you via email prior to each checkpoint day. Um, and you'll just complete that for every classroom. So if you are a site that has more than one NC pre k classroom, you'll do this for each one. And you'll just go through and verify that you have logged into your TS Gold account and you have looked at your teacher's documentation for quality, for quantity. You have looked at their quarterly checkpoints to ensure that they are completed and finalized and that every child has met that requirement. Um, this is just an, an effort to make sure that um, the communication loop is closed between the teacher, myself at Durham Partnership for Children, or other staff, and the director as well. We want to make sure everybody is informed of what's going on within TS Gold. This last section here is regarding lesson plans. So uh, the requirement is such that you teachers um, should be using the creative curriculum for the basis of their lesson plans. Um, so this may look like using studies, um, you can use intentional teaching cards, mighty minutes, book discussion cards, there's a whole lot of curriculum materials that you're able to um, use to develop your lesson plan. Um, the other part of this requirement is that lesson plans should be completed in TS Gold. That is a requirement for this school year. So. Um, I know the online lesson plan system is not favorable to some. I know um, <laughs> there have been some issues with perhaps the font being too small and it printing out way too many pages. Um, I can work with each classroom individually on how to mitigate those issues, but the requirement is that this lesson plan is completed in TS Gold and that it is submitted to administrators within TS Gold. So again, we want administrators and directors to be aware of what's going on in the classroom and be able to support you in that process as well. So that is why the expectation is that they are, the teachers are not only completing the lesson plans using the creative curriculum in TS Gold, but that they are submitted to it, their administrators via TS Gold as well. So that is an overview of these compliance categories here. And you'll see here, again, this quarterly compliance rubric, this breaks down the point values. So you'll see um, each of those sections above that I talked through was worth 20 points. So as long as you have met um, each of those requirements, you have hit 100 points, you are considered in compliance. Um, consider, being considered in compliance also looks like um, hitting between 80 and 90 points. So. Of course, we understand some things may happen here and there. Um, so as long as you have got between 80 to 100 points, you are considered in compliance each quarter. However, if looking at this rubric up here and you score um, 70 points or below, there is a, a process that we'll have to go through to strengthen your practices and support you in returning to an in-compliant status. Um, so I just want to be clear, I know there was some confusion around this last school year. For the 21-22 school year, if, for example, this first instance, this fall compliance rubric is completed and you have scored 70 points or below and you are considered out of compliance, um, that will remain that will not be changed for that fall quarter. There will be opportunities in the winter and the spring, of course, for you to show that you have improved and that requirements are being met, um, but there will not be 
um, you know, an opportunity to change that that score for the fall or whichever quarter it may be. Um, there will be opportunities, of course, going forward to improve those scores. Um, but I wanted to just provide that clarity first that whatever score you receive for that quarter, um, that is what it is. It will not change. Um, and that score will be, you know, incorporated into the, the yearly score at the end of the year. So if you do find yourself in the situation where you have not met program quality expectations, the first time this happens, um, the site administrator is responsible for sharing this information with the applicable teacher or teachers within three business days of being notified of the issue. So this is just um, almost like a warning as you know, an awareness that you know we see that this is happening, we're going to work with you to make sure that quality uh, quality standards are being met. Um, and so someone, either myself or another partnership staff person will work with you and your site administrator to identify what those issues were and ensure that we come up with a plan for um, those requirements being met going forward. If this were to happen again, so the second instance would be the, the winter checkpoint and the winter um, compliance rubric completion. If this happens again, where quality program, or I'm sorry, program quality expectations are not met a second time, this is when a paper trail begins and um, there will be a corrective action plan that's in place. So this will be a collaborative plan between um, the partnership, the teachers and the administrators to develop a really robust plan to identify what those barriers are to meeting expectations and developing a plan to overcome them. And again, um, work towards quality improvement and making sure that you are meeting expectations. Again, um, so the third instance would be that spring checkpoint. Um, if again, for the third time that program quality expectations have not been met, um, as you can see here, this is considered an unacceptable level of quality and is has been considered out of compliance for all three um, compliance check-ins. So partnership staff will meet with the teacher and likely and the director um, on a weekly basis for a minimum of three weeks to provide additional support and work towards that quality improvement. Um, so this just, at this point, it involves a bit more intensive technical assistance and really, really working to make sure that those um, compliance issues that have come up, really strengthening that to make sure that this does not continue, because um, of course we want you to meet expectations. So um, this is where that support becomes a little bit more intense and we work really, really hard to get, get you back into compliance and back to um, you know meeting all requirements and agreements. So this is a um, not so brief, I guess, overview of the 21-22 compliance rubric and guidelines, any updates that have been made to requirements. Um, if you do have any questions after this presentation, um, you are welcome to reach out to me at um, via email at taylor at gpfc.net. Um, for administrators, if you have any additional questions, um, feel free to reach out to Jamika Wells at jamika at gpfc.net. Um, and, you know, we're happy to help provide additional clarity and make sure that everyone has a good understanding of what is expected of them. Great. Well, I hope this uh, presentation was helpful. And again, please reach out if you have any additional questions. Thank you, everybody.